Good evening, and welcome to this gymnastics meet between the Michigan State Spartans and the visiting Flames of Illinois Chicago. I'm Connor Clifford, and with me is my partner, Kara Clarizio. We're here at Jenison Fieldhouse, and we are just as excited to start the season as these gymnasts are. With this being the first meet of the season for both teams, they're looking to start the year off right with a win here tonight. Yeah, as Connor said, it's the first meet of the season, so it's going to be interesting to see who won, who's going to win. Right now, in preseason poll, the Spartans were ranked 28th, and UIC is ranked 45th, so it should be a good meet. Uh, I believe that the Spartans will be starting off things here tonight. Uh, they'll be uh, on the vault to begin things. Uh, what are you looking forward to seeing from uh, Michigan State here on the vault? Um, what, since vault is so short, the landings are really important, so you really want to make sure that they stick their landings. All right, so uh, Michigan State, they're going to be uh, competing in the Big Ten this season. They were uh, picked to finish eighth. Uh, these girls, though, they, uh, they're they going to try and aim for a little bit higher than that. Uh, they believe that they're not, uh, they're, they're better than eighth place. There's only 10 teams in the Big Ten. Uh, all the original Big Ten other than Indiana, Northwestern, Purdue, and Wisconsin. So they believe that they should be up there in the top half of the, the conference. Yeah, not only are they perform well, but they're also very fun to watch. Both Kira Frederick and Anna Gamella were ranked the Big Ten gym, best Big Ten gymnasts to watch. So it should be a fun meet to watch. We're going to take a quick break as the girls set up to start the, the meet up. Uh, we'll be right back. You're watching BTN Plus. UIC, you see right now, is uh, working on the unbalanced beams right now. The beam and bars. The beam and bars. Uh, yes, it's the bars. My bad. The uneven bars. They are doing their touches because they already warmed up earlier, but they get 30 second touch each to warm up their skills real quick before they compete. You can't see right now, but Michigan State, they are actually uh, getting their touches in on vault. Uh, they're waiting for the, is it the springboard? Yep. The springboard to be fixed. Yeah, on bars they mostly do like their mounts and dismounts and all their hard skills just to make sure they have like last minute warming them up, but they don't want to do too much to tire themselves out before they compete. What's going through uh, these girls' heads right now as the season's about to kick off? They're probably very excited, but also very nervous at the same time. It's always very nerve wracking the first meet of the season because everyone wants to start off on a good note. UIC, of course, competing against the nation itself. They are not in a conference. They are uh, one of the independents in the in the nation. There's a couple of them, but they're uh, they're they received 35 points in the preseason poll, so they're uh, they have high hopes for this season. Just so that our viewers uh, are aware, there's about a minute and a half left of touches and then the actual event will be underway. The gymnasts have now got the go ahead to start the event. As I said earlier, Michigan State will start on the vault.
It will be uh, Brittany Chappelle starting it off for the Spartans. Here she goes. There's a beautiful Yurchenko pose, slight bent arms on the table, which would be a slight deduction. But other than that, it should be a pretty high scoring vault. Brittany was, uh, she placed fourth in the all around and third on floor in the region five regional championships in 2013. Uh, also in 2013, 2014, uh, she was in the Junior Olympic National Qualifier, placing ninth all around. And now she is here in uh, Michigan State. Looks like she got a nine strike that nine five five. No. They average out the scores of the two judges for the vault, and each girl has two vaults, so they'll take the best score of the average of the two vaults. So on her first vault, she got the 9.55. On the first vault, one judge gave her a 9.55, and the other one gave her a 9.65, so it would average out to a 9.6. Right now, UIC is going on bars. There's a nice Jaeger connection into a bail, which will probably give her some bonus points. It's a small hop, so that will probably be a tenth, but other than that, it was a pretty clean routine. We will await the scores. So now MSU is going up on vault. It will be Chappelle again, correct? No, I think it's the next. So it's Hoyer. Yes. Ooh, the vault on the table was very good, straight arms, nice block, but she fell, which would be five tenths deduction. Update on the bars performance we just saw. Uh, there was a 9-7 given by one judge and a 9-5-5 given by another. And on bars, or I mean on vault, one judge gave it 8-8-5 while the other one gave a 9-0. So for bars, that averaged out to a 9.625 for UIC, and for the vault for Michigan State, it will average to an 8.85. Eight, eight, or excuse me, 8.9. 2.5. 2.5, 8.925. Eight, Slight leg separation in her blind, which will be a 10.
big step on the landing, which will cause her. But other than that, it was a pretty solid routine. There's a little short in some of the handstands, but other than that, it was very clean. Here is uh, Drew Hender's shot. She will be doing her vault now. Seems like a lot of them are doing your chenko full as a vault. It's a very common vault to do. That's what a lot of girls trade in club and will continue to do in college. Although they just recently changed that a Yurchenko full vault is no longer a 10-0 start value. I believe it's a 9-9. It's so, since the difficulty isn't as high, it's the deduction start from the 9-9 instead of a 10-0. For uh, the bars routine for UIC, one judge gave a 9.25 and the other a 9.3, which will average out to a 9.275. The UIC is up on bars now. Katie Snyder. Slight tap of the feet on the ground, which will be a slight deduction. A slight hop on the landing as well. In vault, she scored a 9675. This is Anna Gamello now for Michigan State. A nice Yurchenko full from her. Another Yurchenko full, which will had she had a good landing, so that should score high. Snyder, her routine got a 9575 on the bars. This is Serena Baker now on the bars for UIC. Has a good bar routine, slight step on the landing, which will be a deduction. And she almost fell on her squat on, but she saved it by doing a toe circle up to the high bar. So far, both teams have been very strong on their events. Here's uh, Nicola Deans now for Michigan State. That was a very nice landing, and she had lots of height, so that will probably be a very high score. received a 9.8 and a 9.7 from the judges. That will average out to 9.75. For uh, Baker, who was just on the bars for Illinois Chicago. <laughs> This 
is uh, Nikki Woodruff on the uneven bars. Little short of a dismount landing, possibly because she hit her toes on the low bar while doing her giants, which could have killed her swing a little. But other than that, the routine was very good. Now is Ella Douglas. She is on the vault for the Spartans. Oh, she did not twist her vault at all, so it's just a Yurchenko layout, but it had very good form. It'd be interesting to see what score this vault gets. Ella received a 9.65 from one judge. I believe it's a 9.8 from the other. It may be readjusting it. And then uh, for UIC, Woodruff got a 9.5 and a 9.55. So that'll average to a 9.525. All right, going back to uh, Ella, she actually got a 9.55 from one judge and a 9.65 from the other. The Spartans are all done at malt now, so and this is the last girl for UIC to go on the uneven bars. Abby has enough. It is small hop. Ooh, wow. she missed the bar on her release That's move, a good which bar will be. <laughs> Little short of the dismount lane. <laughs> Routine strong after the fall, so it should still be a decent score because she had good small form. Hop. And nice dismount. So that will conclude the That's first a good rotation. <laughs> Nicola Deans, nine six seven five from Drew Hendershot. That same score again for Anna Gabello. Jenna Swillow and Serena Baker. Uh, Katie Snyder and Michaela Northern, they both received 9575s. Maddie Nowak, she received a 925. That's a good bar team. <laughs> Six five zero. Oh. Forty-eight point three to forty-seven point six five. Little short of a dismount. <laughs> Oh, it looks
looks like we have one more uh, bars routine from Illinois Chicago. The last team scored an 8 9. That was a very nice stick on bars. So now the two teams will switch. Michigan State will go to the bars and UIC will go to vault. And the last girl to compete on bars for UIC scored a 9.65. So that would be the highest score for UIC on the bars. So that will boost their uh, team score up. The touch has just started. So they have four minutes to all touch the event very quickly before they compete. Once that 965 gets computed, we'll let you know how the team scores are officially. As you can see on bars, there's lots of mat changing happening because every gymnast has different preferences on what types of mats they like for what skills they do and stuff. And they also have to have the mats placed at a perfect spot because they don't want to have it too close or too far where the, judge or the gymnast might hit the mat with their toes or too far away for their landings. So far, both teams look very strong in their touches.
about a minute and a half left of touches and the second rotation will be underway. Start with Illinois Chicago here on the vault now. This is uh, Riley Mahoney for the Flames. Did a very nice Yurchenko layout. Doesn't have any twist in it, so it's not gonna have as high as a start value as some of the other ones will. This is going to be Ella Douglas now on the uneven bars for Michigan State. That vault attempt got a 9.55 and a 9.5, which will average out to a 9.525 for the Flames. She had a strong start to her bar routine, but she had a little struggle with her Tukachi. She hit, caught one of her feet on the bar while trying to go over. So that's going to be a fall. It'll be a five touch deduction. Is her routine over? No, she has 30 seconds to get back onto the bar. She finishes her routine strong with a very small hop on the end, but other than that, it was a, other than the fall, it was a pretty good routine. We just saw UIC uh, do another vault. We'll get you both scores to the bars routine and the vault as soon as they come up. Flames, it looks like one judge gave a 9-6 and the other gave a 9-5-5. Um, for Michigan State, one judge has a 9-2. Uh, waiting to see what the other judge has. Or excuse me, the on the vault it was a 9-6 and a 9-7. 9-6-5 and a 9-7, so it averages out to 9-6-7-5 for the vault. Thank you. Uh, for the average out for Michigan State's bars attempt for, by Douglas, it will go to a 9.05. 
which is a very good score considering she had a fall. It is Sally Gear off of the release move on the bars. She caught, so that's a good start. Always boost your confidence when you make your hard skills in the beginning. A very slight step on the discount, probably a half a tenth, but other than that, it was a pretty clean routine. Allison Broad now on uh, the vault for Illinois Chicago. Yurchenko full, she steps off the mat, so that's gonna be a deduction there. Previous bars attempt for Michigan State. Uh, it will be a 9.75 and a 9.7, averaging out to a 9.725. That last uh, vault will be a 9.5 and a 9.55 for a 9.525 total. Kira Frederick. As a beautiful routine by Frederick. There would be hard, the judges are going to have to look very hard to find deductions of where she messed up. Here is another Flames vault attempt. She changes it up by going frontwards onto the table instead of backwards like all the Yurchenkos. be a 9-6 and a 9-7 on that last vault we just saw. For uh, Frederick's bars attempt, it will be a 9-8-5 and it looks like a 9-7. 9 7, nine, seven, seven, five. Nine, seven, seven five will be the average of the two scores on top bars. This is Nicola Deans now for Michigan State. Beautiful ganger, lad, lots of height in it. It was a very clean routine. She had lots of control and was very tight. Only main thing I noticed was a slight step on the dismount. Here's another vault. Takes a tumble. She had a fall on the landing out of her for your chinko full, so it'll be five tenths. For Deans's uh, 
Bars routine, it was a 9.85 and a 9.8, which will average out to a 9.825 for the team. Here's uh, Lindsay Lemke. On the vault, the previous vault got a 9 1. It was a beautiful stick by Lindsay. Very clean routine. To be excited to see her score. Here's Nikki Woodruff once again for the Flames. That looks like one of the better vaults that UIC has had, so that probably be one of their higher scores. A uh, 9-8 from one judge and a 9-8-5 from another on that bars routine that we just saw from Lemke. With that, it'll average out to a 9-8-2-5. So already the Spartans have Four uh, gymnasts who have scored higher on the bars than UIC's best uh, gymnast did on it, which should help with uh, an early lead for MSU. She had lots of flight in that Tokachi. Judges really look for how much flight that they have in their release moves. This is Haley Wesney. She actually got third. She stuck the landing. She got third on the uneven bars uh, in the Big Ten Championship last, last season. Hoping to do better this year. She did great on that last routine. And that's going to finish the second rotation. Push your confidence when you make your hard skills in the beginning. Michigan State will uh, start off on the, the beam for the third rotation this while UIC West will be doing their floor third. She stuck the land. Boost your confidence when you make your hard skills in the beginning. Once all the scores come in for that last rotation, we'll let you know how the totals are adding up so far. This is Haley Wesley. She actually got third. She stuck the lane on that last bar routine. One judge gave a 9-8 and the other one gave a 9-9-5. So the score average will be a 9-8-7-5. So all four Michigan State scores for the uneven bars were better than uh, UIC's top gymnast. So uh, that should help Boost on your the vault, when you make your hard uh, skills in the it's beginning. a little bit more distri evenly distributed. Uh, Nicola Dean still is leading that for Michigan State. Uh, this is Haley West. She actually got second third. Stuck the lane. As of the latest uh, calculations, Michigan State is up by 0 0.75, 96.5 to 95.75. To my knowledge, uh, everything, all the beginning. scores have been calculated. I could be wrong on that, but that's the information we have right now. Nicola Dean's leading the way for Michigan this State. Is best she score on vault, third. best score on bars. Uh, she will also be uh, com competing on the beam and the floor, uh, looking to take over that uh, all around score. All right, we just got a new score in. Michigan State is actually going to have a 1.575 lead in going into this third rotation you your hard the with beginning. the score 97.325 to 95.750. And on bars, uh, Haley Wesley is actually, actually going to take the lead Stuck over the Nicola Deans.
Both teams will begin their touches. Boost your confidence when you make your hard skills in the beginning. This is Haley Westney. MSU is going to be up on the balance beam, which is usually the most nerve-wracking event to compete because it's very easy to mess up. Just if you're off slightly, then you, there's a good chance you'll fall. So that's one that you really need to focus on and make sure you're straight over the beam and very tight so you don't wobble or fall off. This, of course, was Who's your favorite you event your in high school. In uh, tell us about why you liked it so much. Um, I love the balance beam just because it was, this is it didn't West take a ton of like stuck energy like, like floor vault does. And you can just really focus on what you're doing and just the nerves of it. Like once you finish it, get off the beam, you just like are so like happy with what you did and because you like know how hard it is to stay on. So if, when you do stay on, you feel very accomplished and stuff. Of course, as you soon as you dismount, uh, your team goes ballistic for you, especially if you've just done a great routine. Uh, of course, with this MSU playing any planting, third, they have uh, the home crowd to do that as well. Does home crowd play into a big factor in gymnastics, do you think? Um, not as much as it does in other sports, I would say, but definitely on events like floor, it really helps out with giving you the energy for your tumbling that you need. On beam, not so much because you don't want it to be too loud to that's distracting or like make you fall off. But when you land routines and going for big skills on floor and vault, the crowd and cheer really helps West with getting the motivation and power to do it. About a minute and a half for uh, the girls to continue with their touches. The third rotation will be on the way. Once again, MSU with a 1.575 lead. Boost your confidence when you make your hard skills in the beginning. This is Haley Westney. She actually got third. She's stuck the lane. Boost your confidence when you make your hard skills in the beginning. This is Haley Westney. She actually got third. She's on stuck the lane. your confidence when you make your hard skills in the beginning. Touches are over and the judges are taking control of their events. This is Haley Westney. She actually got a third in with Stuck Michigan the State on the beam. Holly Ryan will kick it off for the Spartans. gymnast on the team. This is Haley Westney. She actually got third. She stuck the lane. Boost 
your confidence when you make your hard skills at the beginning. Her back handspring layout was her tumble series. All gymnasts are required to have a tumble series on the beam. And the judges really look for the connection to make sure that it's constantly flowing and it's not broken at all. Slight step on the dismount. Other than that, it was a pretty solid routine that had a couple wobbles, but she managed to stay on, which is a great way to start the event. This is Haley Wesley. She actually got third. She stuck the lane. This is now the flames on the floor routine. Fun events to watch. To you get to see everyone's personality come out in their music and routines that they do. Ryan, she received a nine six five and a nine seven. Allie Hoyer now on balance beam for Michigan State. She nailed her series just like Holly Ryan. She stuck her dismount. So far, we've gone two for two with her staying on the beam. For UIC, will be on the floor. Woodruff got a nine six seven five. <laughs> received a 965 and a 97 on beam for a 9675. So she stepped out of balance, so each foot out of balance is gonna be a deduction off.
just getting ready for her last tumbling pass. You're always super, super tired by your last one, but you gotta maintain the difficulty throughout the routine. So you gotta finish with a hard tumbling pass too. Kira Frederick now for the Spartans will take the beam. She fell at the end of her series. So that'll be five tenths, but we've started strong, so it should not affect the, sc the overall score too much. It's always mentally tough to finish a beam routine after you know you've already fallen. But you gotta finish it strong, so you, because you wanna keep from falling again. Allison Broad received a 9.4 on that floor routine. But she stuck her dismount. She finished her routine very strong after she had trouble with her series, so it should still turn out to be a decent score. Now it is Daniela Maceo for... Both feet were out, so it's going to be a deduction for each foot out. I believe it's one tenth for each foot out of balance, but every tenth adds up quickly. So you really want to try to avoid even little deductions. As of right now, UIC is uh, down by 1.85 points to MSU. They can't really afford to uh, give up too many points. Which she struggles with the last tumbling pass of her routine. As I said before, you're always very tired by it, but it, you have to finish it strong. Haley Westney now on the beam for Michigan State. Did a nice double turn on the beam. You see most gymnasts do usually just one single turn, but she did a double, which will up her start value.
but she stuck her dismount, so she managed to stay on the whole Beamer team. So far, the Spartans are looking good on Beam. Eight nine seven five is uh, how Maciel will uh, finish on the floor for UIC. We'll get you that bars uh, that uh, beam routine uh, real quick. That score as soon as that's up. Nine seven five and another nine seven five, which will average out to nine seven five for that beam. This is Hezanov on the Boost your floor for you. Make your hard skills in the beginning. Tumbling pass. Hopefully she can. <laughs> Ella Douglas up once again now. This time on the beam. Floor routine, she received a 9.65 and a 9.7 for a 9.675. She sticks her dismount. Boost your confidence when you make your hard skills in the beginning. your confidence. So far in beam we have four people who have stayed on. So if the last person stay on that would be very good for the team score to have five people without falls. That's always the goal. The goal is to always have six people stay on but five to count for sure. This is Tony Alicki for the Flames. She hails from uh, Germany. One of a uh, couple of international gymnasts for this Flames team. And Douglas got a 9.825 from Beam.
with the most recent calculations, uh, Michigan State was up by 1.9 points. Illinois Chicago. <laughs> out of anybody in, on the vault. Second best in uh, on the uneven bars. Looking to continue with uh, the beam. She's last up on the balance beam because her coaches think that she will most likely have one of the higher scores if she does her teams how they do it in practice. Oh, and she fell. So it'll be a 5 10 deduction there, but she's, the uh, beginning of her routine was pretty solid. So hopefully there's not much other deduction. Tony Alicki received a 9.65 on her floor routine. Step on the dismount in the fall. Other than that, there was hardly any other deductions in the routine. Here is McKill and Northern for Illinois Chicago.
advantages for being at home, you always end up floor, end on floor, which is one of the better events to end on, rather than the way team who always ends on beam. Because when you go to beam, you know how many times the other team has how many falls they've had on off or what their score you need. And you already have enough nerve on beam. You don't need the extra pressure on trying to beat the scores. thing that I always think about uh, when I'm a spectator is on the beam. It's got to be so nerve-wracking doing the, the flips with your head so close to the to the beam itself. And it's I give all the credit to the gymnasts that are able to compete and do that type of type of movements because I, I would never be able to work up the nerve to do that. Yeah, for a lot of them, it's part of the excitement that makes being fun is how risky it is and everything. So now does the all around, does that uh, affect the team score at all or is that more of a personal victory? The all-around is more of a personal victory more than the team because the all-around isn't calculated into the team score at all. And also not every gymnast does all-around because they have more people on the team than just six, but only six people can compete on each event. So they pick the top six girls for competing events, and only a few are good all are the best at all of the events for the top six. So you always want to try and have at least one person compete all around in case the, your, the competing team has all arounders too and you'll want to have the win not, even, not only on all four events but also in the all around. Touches are over for the final rotation. The gymnasts will now start their final event. strong by nailing her series. Slight wobble there, but luckily she wasn't going to connect it in anything, so she didn't break any connections. It was a good routine to start off the flames on beam. <laughs> Formation 
Michigan State, it will be Holly Ryan kicking things off once again for the Spartans. Notice she has some mats on the floor. It could, there's people put mats on the floor for several reasons. Sometimes they're not fully comfortable with the skill that they're competing. Sometimes they just do it to make the landing a little bit softer on the ankles and knees because doing several pounding over and over again can really hurt the body. Hasanov received a 9-5 from both the judges. So that will be her total score. And I'm sure you know some floor that all gymnasts pretty much do three big tumbling passes. And they have to have at least a back scale and a front scale in, all, in the three of them total. So if they, don't, if they only do front tumbling or only do back tumbling, there's a deduction there for not having the other. Nikki Woodruff once again competing. She'll be on the beam. Front scale in all in the three of them total. So if they don't, if they only do front tumbling or only do back tumbling, there's a deduction there for not having the other. Very powerful series. Allie Hoyer received a nine six five and a nine seven. Now I average out to 9675. Quite stuff from the dismount. Other than that, it was a very solid routine. The Flames have gone two for two on their routines, just like the Spartans did. Up next on the floor for Michigan State will be Allie Hoyer. Woodruff received a 9.7 and a 9.6 for an uh, average score of 9.65. There's a fall on her double pike for the Spartans on floor. You can really hear the ch crowd cheering for her last tumbling pass here. And she landed it. Oh. 
As we await her results, it is now Daniela Maciel for Illinois Chicago on the beam. Slight wobble on her series, but she managed to save it and stay on. Wobbles are usually somewhere between one to three tenths, depending on how big they are, while falls are five tenths. So you always want to try and save a skill and stay on instead of just falling on it. Hoyer received a 9-1-7-5 on her floor routine. And beam, she fell on her side, Sumi, unfortunately, so it'll be five tenths there, plus the tenths from her wobble earlier. And all those tenths are gonna add up, so. She almost stuck her dismount, though, so that is good. Probably not the routine she wanted, but it was not bad at all. Here's Drew Hender's shot from Michigan State on the floor. Maciel received a 9-1 and a 9 for an average of 9.05. Excuse me, a 9-1-5. She received a 9-1 and 9-2 for the average of 9-1-5. Correction again, it's actually a 9-1-2-5. Love how excited the fellow teammates get after they finish their floor routine. They all are very supportive of each other, which really helps out in this sport. Here's uh, Tony Alike. This floor can be physically and mentally tough, so it's always nice to have this um, support of fellow teammates with you. Oh, she really fought to stay on the beam, but unfortunately she was unable to. Correction again, it's actually a 9-1-2-5. Hendershot received a 9-7 on her floor routine.
Washington has solid Beamer team, which will help out the flame score overall. Here's Ella Douglas for the Spartans. Alike received a 9-1 and a 9-2 for an average of 9-1-5. Beautiful double pike on floor. Jonas Willow now on the beam. Notice how on the beam they always are trying to constantly to keep moving because there's a time limit on the beam. So you need to be able to fit in all the skills and requirements you need in a certain amount of time. So it forces you to keep moving and not be able to necessarily think about a, a scale as long as you might want to. Douglas received a 9.85 on the floor, which is good for uh, the best floor routine of the night so far. UIC really needed a stick, and she managed to do it, which will help out their team. Kira Frederick now on the floor with the latest calculations. Uh, UIC with a 2.575 point deficit. Willow received a 9.65 on that beam. Frederick's all-time best score on this event is a 9-9. She may not be get it today because it's still the beginning of the season, but I think she's definitely capable of doing it again. Thank you. 
Looks like a pretty solid routine to me, so hopefully she gets her best score close. This is Northern now competing once again, now on the beam. It's a solid series, not even a little wobble. Frederick received a 9-8 on the floor. And on the beam, Northern received a 9-7-5. Deans will finish it off for Sparty. Looks like they might be having a little trouble with the music. But they it's always a little stressful as a gymnast to not have your music work. So that's always what you really count on for your beats and everything in your routine. Double layout. Her team and the crowd just going nuts. You can tell by her first two, two tumbling passes that she's a very powerful tumbler. Last pass is coming up. Hopefully she finishes strong. That was a great finish for the Spartans. Now on the beam is Riley Mahoney.
slight wobble, but the connections between all those jumps were very well. So she'll get all her points for that, but slight deduction for the wobble at the very end. It's better to have a wobble at the end of a series than in between. Beautiful double layout. The team and the crowd just going nuts. You can tell by her first two, two tumbling passes that she's a very powerful tumbler. Dean's received a 9.775 on that last floor routine as Mahoney finishes up there. Stay with us for the award ceremony as the final calculations come in. And I'm sure you know some floor that all gymnasts pretty much do three big tumbling passes. And they have to have at And I'm sure you know some floor that all gymnasts pretty much do three big tumbling passes. Mahoney received and they have to have at like least nine, four, the back five. scale and the front scale. And Correction all nine, of, and five, the three five. of them total so if they don't if they only do front tumbling or only do back five nine five 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 so the leaders uh, in each five. event for vault it was Nicola Nicola Deans uh, she received a 9.75 on bars for Michigan State once again. It was Haley Wesley. She Correction had again. a 9.875. 9.125. On the beam and the floor, it was Ella Douglas for MSU. On beam, she scored a 9.825. And on floor, it was a 9.85. Uh, but in all around, it was UIC with uh, Michaela Northern. She uh, scored 38.675. And uh, those are your leaders for each event, unless uh, there is a score that hasn't been entered in yet. Um, the total scores for the teams right now is Michigan State 194.175, uh, Illinois Chicago 191.475. That's good enough for a 2.7 win uh, for Michigan State. Both team scores are very well because it's going to be out of a, a, the highest you can get is a 200. So both teams had less than 10 points taken off between all four events. Well, this is an outstanding Beautiful performance double layout. For State. Last year, their team high score was 193.225, and they've already beat that on their first meet of the year. Uh, so this is definitely a team that has high hopes. Uh, for down the stretch. You can tell by her first two, two tumbling passes that she's a very And I'm sure you know some floor that all gymnasts pretty much do three big tumbling
that's a good for, start. Uh, their next meet is against Iowa Always at the Iowa Friday when you make your heart the 13th. Skills in the beginning. But as we look forward uh, through their schedule, a big matchup. Uh, very big slight meet. step February on the 11th, probably uh, a half a ten, but other than Big rivalry right there. Michigan uh, expected to win the Big Ten in gymnastics. Uh, of course, these girls want to prove them wrong. They want to prove that uh, they are the big brother. They want to uh, take home by uh, some pride. They want to beat their uh, rivals here at East Lansing. It was a very clean routine. She had lots of control and was very tight. Only main thing I noticed was a slight step on the distance. For uh, Illinois Chicago, they take on uh, another Big Ten team, as I said, Illinois. Uh, Illinois. And, um, but that's not it. They also have to take Tom's on fault, Iowa fault, got a um, and Rutgers. Uh, another two Big Ten teams. So uh, this, this school has, uh, has a long road ahead of them. They play uh, Western Michigan twice. Beautiful stick by Lindsay. And, uh, Very clean routine. They, uh, they're going to try and see her score. keep their heads up after this loss. Uh, go into things. Uh, uh, looking to get some revenge. This is Haley Wesley. She actually got third. She stuck the landing. She got third on the uneven bars uh, in the Big Ten Championship last, last season. Hoping to uh, do better this year. She did great on that last routine. Has a beautiful routine by Frederick. Ours, she.
a good start. Always boost your confidence when you make your hard skills in the beginning. A very slight step on the dismount, probably a half a tenth, but other than that. That is a beautiful routine by Frederick. That was a very clean routine. She had lots of control and was very tight. Only main thing I noticed was a slight step on the dismount. On the vault, the previous vault got a 9-1. It was a beautiful stick by Lindsay. Very clean routine. To be excited to see her score. This is Haley Wesley. She actually got third. She stuck the landing. She got third on the uneven bars uh, in the Big Ten Championship last, last season. Hoping to do better this year. She did great on that last routine. 